<laughs> Hi guys. Um, I've I've moved my microphone around. Normally it's on like this boom arm, but some people were saying that my uh, audio seemed a little bit off, um, and so I decided to move the microphone. And I normally don't do a coffee time with COVID this late, but here's a cup. I just finished seeing the Member Berries episode that is Star Trek Picard. And I'm sorry, but why has the Borg been the scapegoat for the last three seasons of Picard? In season one, there was a cube, was, keyword. Spoiler for you, seven or nine crashes into a planet. Season 2, Girardi, who basically should have died in Season 1, but for some reason they just said, you know what, we'll keep this person who seems like she would belong in Star Trek, which she absolutely wouldn't, um, becomes the new Borg Queen. Key point. New Borg Queen. And then, quote-unquote, becomes the Guardian at the Gates. Okay, is the guardian at the gates now, which is apparently some forgotten about thing for season three. And so now, again, if you haven't seen season three, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler for you. The Borg have an alliance with the changelings, with the Dominion. Didn't we just establish that the Borg have joined the Federation from Season 2? That they made an alliance to join a temporary alliance, you know, bring all your deflector shields on, stop the horrible beam thingy from coming through the wormhole thingy that they came through. What writers call a plot device viewers hardcore viewers like myself call horseshit or what's what i'm looking for here um plot holes so in the first season captured board cube hugh love the dude god rest his soul can't believe they killed him off they even killed off freaking Icheb. So, and not only did they make Harkening back to, to Admiral Janeway several times, but Kate Mulgrew does not show up. I don't know. I'm sorry. They, they even got her to do some voice acting in Star Trek Online. Okay, so it's not like she's not willing or wanting to play... Uh, 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 Admiral Janeway, who's now an Admiral, a full-fledged Admiral. So, why don't you stop using the Borg as your bullshit escape goat, okay? Yes, we all know that Cisco made a pact with the, 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 the people in the wormhole to make some of the Dominion ships disappear. I honestly thought it was the Dominion ships that were going to be coming through. Because that would have been freaking awesome. But no, you make it like a sun farted and it was a really bad solar flare. That's it. It, 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 it. It's like a black hole had indigestion and just burnt. So that was a fucking letdown from season two. Now, season three, you kill off the only decent character, Captain Shaw. Sorry, huge fan of that character. How about go? How about no? You know, like the fact that he quite literally knew that Picard and Riker were up to something. And, and flat out ended it. I mean, yeah, he died like a boss. You know, but I would have loved to have seen maybe a spin-off show. You know, USS Titan. You know, not necessarily with just Seven of Nine as the captain, but as sure as the captain. You know, 
That would have been good. That would have been nice. A little harker back there. Paramount. CBS. Whoever's got the, the rights to it anymore. Apparently which would be Netflix. And I'm sorry. Star Trek Discovery might as well be called Star Trek Michael Burnham. Okay. I'm sorry. The Enterprise. Star Trek The Next Generation. Voyager. Deep Space Nine was not solely an entire fucking season about one person. One person. You want to know why Discovery flopped? Gee, let me think. The show's called Star Trek Discovery, yet we don't discover anything. We don't do anything. We don't build up anything. Any kind of character arcs with anything other than Michael fucking Burnham. A character that never fucking existed. Hmm? Yeah, let's not go there. And... Like I said... You've introduced so... Many exciting characters, like the fact that geordie has got two daughters in Starfleet. And one's a pilot, the other one's an engineer. You know? The fact that you've brought back Data from the dead now... Twice? Three times? I've lost fucking count. Okay, I'm sorry, Brett. I, I get it, Mr. Spiner, that you you you're hard up for work. Or, or you're not, I don't know. But for Christ's sake... You played a an android. Then all of a sudden you become a particle that can pass on your knowledge to your two daughters. One dies horribly because Picard's an idiot and can't save her. And the other one he does rescue. But then later on in season two in an alternate timeline... She's your organic daughter, which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Who's allergic to the sun, I might add. Um, okay. Uh, interesting twist there. Uh, you lost me. Uh, it, it, it just... <sighs> the entire Picard show is all member berries. This season, season three, is member berries. Okay, the fact that you go to the Starfleet Museum and there's Voyager, an intrepid class, Voyager, there's, Def the, there's the Defiant, there, there's the Klingon Bird of Prey that Kirk stole, there's a Constitution class, and spoiler, apparently, there's a fucking Galaxy class inside there, the original Enterprise's saucer section that Geordi managed to... Whick, I think five finger discount it back from a fucking planet and then add in another galaxy classes engineering section and warp themselves. Okay. So she's a Frankenstein. That that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay with that. But what I'm not okay with is the fact that the bridge is completely off scale. Off scale, completely off scale. I'm sorry, my friend Carwin brought this up on Facebook. Carwin, love you, dude. He brought this up on Facebook that the 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 the, the horseshoe tactical thing is not wide enough, and it's not by a good half a feet. And I get it. The original studio was probably demolished, chucked into a skip, and then put into a landfill years ago. But the point is. You have access to Doug Drexler, to Mike Okuda, to literally a lot of the original staff that has either the blueprints, the measurements, the the the. Cr you even added Doug Drexler as a ship, even. Okay, and Doug, I'm happy for you. I'm glad we've got something of, of Trek back. But this is a shell of its former self. I'm sorry, but it is. We've got a pacifist wharf. I'm sorry. What cucked you? Seriously. What cucked you? 
losing Dax twice, maybe? Both Jadzia and Ezri? Oh, no. You know, maybe, possibly? I don't know. Or how about the fact that you could have added in Riker's transporter evil twin that's apparently in a mucky prison that technically would be out now? You could have added him into a story arc. You know? Or... You know, but no, you, you... you there are so many characters that... Like, like, like okay... You, you want to add in people from Voyager and, and, and whatnot. Why not add in Kira? Why not harker back... Or even fucking Odo... Uh, not Odo, uh, Quark. Why, why not actually go back... Uh, Garak, even. Fuck. Just, just, just even Bashir. You could have... I'm pretty sure you could have thrown Bashir a bone. I'm pretty sure he would have shown up in a cameo. But no, think about it, you, you, you've got this changeling arc, what have you done with it? Nothing, fuck all, absolutely fuck all, you are trying to shove a hundred pounds of shit into a ten pound bag, and it's not working, you've got so many loose threads in this story that, 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 that it, it's just... Like, 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 okay, so it's the Borg. But the Borg are allies that have been established in Season 2. Why? 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 And and what's worse is is, is Mr. Franks, Riker. I understand that you are on the story team. You're on the writing team. That that, that this baby is that this season apparently is your baby. Have you seen any Star Trek? I mean, I know you were in it. And I mean, and, and then what's worse is, is you do an angle with, with, with Wesley and then that's it. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, Picard didn't like Wesley. Oh, shut up, Wesley. No one likes Wesley. I can't stand Phil Wheaton. I'm sorry. I can't stand him. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't stand him. He should have just stayed dead. But you drag him out of the back. I'm sorry. Shave that dude's face off. He looks like he's 15. His son looks older than him. Okay. I just and, and I'm sorry Beverly. I love you darling. Gates McFadden. You are an absolute sweetheart of a woman. Stage and show. You are an amazing performer. But what is with the plastic surgery? I'm sorry, but every time I look at her face, it looks like a deflated football. It literally looks like a deflated football. It's worse than Madonna's. And that's saying something. It, it, at least Deanna Troy has aged beautifully. And she's a beautiful woman. She's a beautiful actress talented to no end loved her in csi loved her in, in in so many other shows but the thing that that, that that that's doing my head in and i mean it's absolutely doing my fucking nut in is 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 picard's son Could he be any more of a Mary Sue? Could he be any more of a fucking Ray Skywalker? Seriously. 
If that man ever showed any kind of emotion in his acting, I would be terrified. Terrified. Absolutely terrified. And I get it. There's, there's, this season is pretty much just trying to fix the loose threads from the end of, of Star Trek The Next Generation. With the whole Locutus of Borg, you know, Eremonic Syndrome, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's so why I could always still hear the Borg and all this shit. Well, Seven of Nine can still hear him. Does she have Eremonic Syndrome too? No. And like I said, the fact that they, they, they bring back Data for him to do this yin-yang moment where he he quite literally overpowers Law. Okay, whatever. And, and I'm sorry, I knew that this season, season three, had something to do with the Borg from the very first very first scene in the very first episode why because beverly crusher is listening to right uh, to to picard's uh, personal logs about being trapped inside the nebula with the borg cube waiting outside so that kind of sets the precedence of borg it's like stop using the borg as the fucking scapegoat for everything okay it's like like you've forgotten season two even fucking existed. I just, oh, you, you make you know what you're making me Irish up this coffee. You're literally making me Irish up this coffee. Oh god, I think I overdid it. But you, you've made me Irish up this coffee oh, for crying out loud. Whoa! You've made me Irish up this coffee. That's how fucking pissed and mad and angry I am. Seeing the the the, the Neo Constitution class, okay. Alright. Uh, I've seen that ship design before in Star Trek Online. 90% of the ships that are appearing in Star Trek Picard, you can see in Star Trek Online. Just, just, it, it, it hurts my head. It physically hurts my head. Why? 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 Just, just, just why? I'm, I'm sorry for this rant. I'm sorry for the curse words, guys. It's pretty late in the evening. I haven't eaten yet. I'm drinking a coffee with whiskey in it because, I, like I said, I just finished watching the very last episode, and I loved Shaw. Shaw was an amazing captain. Rest in peace, my friend. You, you were fuck. You were the boss. You know. In, in, in all opinion, in my opinion, you were the goat of that entire ship. I'm sorry, you were the greatest of all time of that ship. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, guys. I'm not even... <sighs> I've got miniatures to paint, so I'm going to call it done here. Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.